If you don't want to see how meat's processed on the farm and processed into sausage, bacon, country hams, and various other pork products used for consumption here on the farm, the food that we eat, I suggest that you skip this three-part video series on how to process a pig. Thanks a lot. I just wanted to tell you that before we get started, that the videos are not gruesome and they're not gross, but they are teaching videos and they'll show you the old-fashioned way, the old-time way of processing a hog here on the farm. And if you're squeamish or if you think for one second you might not like this kind of video, just skip this three-part video series. Thank you. All right, folks, we're on day three. Day three of this hog processing video. Today, we're going to be making the sausage. Now, we killed two hogs, okay? One hog was for one man, and one hog was for the other man. Normally, if you're doing this for your family, you want to kill one or two hogs. It's a big waste to do it for just one hog. So, we did two hogs, and if we did two hogs for our family, we would probably be making a lot more sausage than this. Out of the two hogs, we're going to have about 35 pounds of sausage, and we'll go ahead and show you how we make the sausage, how we season the sausage, and how we process the sausage. Okay, that's what part three is today. So come on along, we'll have a little bit of fun. All right. bacon here. We're laying the bacon out and just barely salting it. Just enough salt to give it a little flavor. We're not actually trying to cure the bacon. Okay. And then the next step with the bacon, what else do we do with it? We'll stack it up for a couple of days and let it take salt and then we'll lay it out and let it dry. After it dries, we'll take us a little liquid smoke and we'll put a little liquid smoke on it. Let that dry. Maybe, maybe a tablespoon full of brown sugar. A little salt, not much, and that'll just start the meat process, dry the water out. What we're trying to do here is to pull the water out of the bacon. Gotcha. So that when we put it in the pan, it don't steam, steam and turn into mush. We want it nice and crispy. We want it to taste like corn-fed hog. We don't want it to taste like any preservatives or additives or anything. We want it to taste like hog meat, corn fed hog. Now, can you leave this bacon out? It needs to be in a cool area. Cool area with the wind blowing through it, such as today, 55 degrees or 25 degrees is still fine. No problem at all. So, just and once it gets done curing after a couple of weeks, you're gonna keep it refrigerated until time to eat it, right? You can freeze it, you can refrigerate it, you can do anything you want to do with it. You can, uh, if you have a lot of kids, you can just eat it plumb up. But you can leave it in the refrigerator for a couple of months. Or you can stick it in the freezer in an airtight baggie and it will keep a couple of years. So, now this is the type of bacon people are designed now because everybody's looking for hand cut bacon. Nobody wants machine cut bacon. They want it thicker or thinner or ever how they choose to cut it. So they definitely don't want factory produced uh, bacon that's been soaked in a brine. Yes. They want to do it the old-fashioned way. Now the salt has begun to take. As you can see it's gone away. Can't see it. The meat will begin to sweat. If it sweats that means it's taking in salt. The thicker the piece, the more salt you use. The thinner the piece, the less salt you'll use. And we'll continue on. Now the salt, you can't even tell I put any on it, but it's still on there and it's, it's beginning to soak in. Had the hog completely chilled and the weather been freezing cold, then we would have had to warm it up to get it to take salt. 
because if it gets too cold and the meat's frozen, it will not take salt. So where we go from here, guys, is we have 35 pounds of sausage right here. This is our sausage grinder, and we're using Old Plantation Pork Sausage Seasoning. And this is the brand right here. I'll post a link down below to some of this Old Plantation seasoning, and we're also using a lot of rubbed sage, okay? So the Old Plantation seasoning and the sage are very important. One bag of Old Plantation does 25 pounds of sausage. We have 35 pounds of sausage here. What we'll do is we'll mix in, we'll mix in the sausage mixture, we'll stir it all in there really good, turning it in there, we'll grind it, we'll taste test it, and then we'll add more Old Plantation seasoning as we need it. So that's what this is all about, Old Plantation. All right, and I'll post a link down below to it. Something that's worth mentioning is if you put too much in there, you never can take it out. So you can always add a little bit more. That's why we cook a little bit of sausage today as we're doing it, and we'll season it to taste. So the plate that we're going to use to grind our sausage here on the end of the sausage grinder is a 3 16 inch plate. And let me show you the sausage grinder. If I can find one of these on Amazon, I'll post a link down below to that too, okay? Try to group all this stuff together so if you're going to do a hog yourself, you can buy this equipment. And this is called a General Model D sausage grinder. Pretty interesting. This pan right here comes right off the top. The meat goes down in there, there's a little thing that twirls and pulls the meat through and the sausage will come out on this end. Now we'll mix in our seasonings, we'll run off a few sausage cakes, we'll taste it, and that's basically the biggest secret behind it. You can over season your sausage and it won't be good at all. So we've got to taste it, and we got three people down here to taste it. Me, my dad, and my stepmom. Be a good time. So I want to show you a few different attachments that you can put on this sausage grinder and basically these things mount on the plate at the end and you can stuff sausage, you can make hot dogs, you can make all sorts of different kinds of sausages, jerkies, stuff like that with the sausage grinder. There's several different kinds of sausage grinders. I'll post a link down below to one that will fit on your KitchenAid stand mixer which is what I used last time. And there'll be a link to the video that I used last time for making sausage. I'll post it up here somewhere. We used our KitchenAid stand mixer in that video. So with our hands all washed up and clean, we'll lay the meat out here at about two inches deep, one to two inches deep, and then we'll spread the seasoning over and then we'll mix it all in. So you might be wondering about how much fat to put in this. It's about one third fat, two thirds lean meat, and we'll spread our seasoning out over top. Okay. So he's spreading the seasoning out on top of the meat here. As evenly as possible. Mm -hmm. So now we're putting the sage on and what we want to do is put a heavy, heavy coat of sage on. Basically turning the whole pile of meat green. Now we'll take and turn the meat, mix it up and coat every piece very well. It doesn't have to be an exact science, but we'll turn it up and mix it all up. Never can mix it too much. Just continue to mix. So we've had this meat in the freezer for about two hours or so, so that we get really cold. The colder it gets, the harder it gets, the easier it is to push it through the sausage grinder. If it's really warm and soft, it kind of mushes up in the sausage grinder. So what we're doing right now is mixing it all up, and any pieces that might have frozen together, we break those up. You just can't mix it enough. You just keep on kneading it and turning it. So one point to make guys, if you're going to do this and you're a tall person or you're a short person, you want to make sure that you're not going to have to bend over the whole time while you're doing this. So if you've got a table and you're doing this in your basement or in your garage, put it up on blocks if you need to because you're going to be bent over working your hands like this all the time. Try to make it ergonomically helpful. If you're mixing it like this and the cold really bothers your hands, then wear rubber gloves, it'll really help. So what he's doing right now is mixing up our test piece. So basically we just pick out several pieces, grind them up, he'll patty them out, and we'll give it a taste test and see what it tastes like. I gotta do it my way, that way I know it's right. Looking good as far as texture, as far as texture is perfect, it's not falling apart. 
There's enough grease in there so that you can make your gravy. Crumble it up. Take some biscuits and make gravy. And uh, just be on top of the world. Alright, first taste of this sausage. Good. We need a touch more seasoning. One thing about it is, you can always add a little salt after the fact. It's really good. Good texture. I like a little more kick to mine. You can always add that too. We're gonna add, we're gonna make some of it a little spicy and some of it mild. Right now I give it a seven. Seven and a half. Needs a little more seasoning. That's mild. That's as mild as you can get. Mm -hmm. Daniel? It's delicious though. It's absolutely That's delicious. That's real good. So the deal with this pig is we split two pigs. We took two pigs and killed them. One guy's getting a certain portion of sausage and they want them a little bit mild and we want ours a little bit more spicy, so we'll go on and make theirs up. It's good. Mm. Nothing like fresh sausage straight off the hog. Mm. Just a taste that you can't describe to folks. We're going to get busy grinding. As it comes through the machine, begin to knead it. They can move it around, spread it around. And then it gets mixed up really well. So as we continue to grind the sausage, my stepmom is mixing it and kneading it together and my dad is pushing the sausage down into the sausage grinder. And we'll continue to do this until we run off the amount of mild sausage that we want for the other family that's going to get some sausage from us. After we get done doing that, we'll take the sausage that we're going to make and we'll add our seasonings to it. We'll put a little bit more and a little bit of spice to it. Give it a little bit of a kick. We've got a little bit of work to do. It's a good time. It's a good family activity. Hope you guys are learning a little something today. Having a little bit of fun here. So when it comes time to taking the hams out of the salt box, we'll do another video removing the hams from the salt box. And it'll be kind of a part four to this three-part series, but we'll do a little removing the hams from the salt box. So be sure you subscribe, stay tuned, click the like button, click the little bell down there. It'll notify you when I post a new video. And in about six weeks, we'll pull those hams out and we'll rub them down with black pepper and we'll do what my dad learned from my grandpa and what my grandpa learned from my great-grandpa. So the final mix here, we've added a little more sage and a little more old plantation seasoning and my father here has some fresh made cayenne peppers right out of the garden. It's a mixture of Kung Pao, Thai chili and cayenne. Not too spicy, but just spicy enough. The cayenne pepper is good. You don't want to bite into a piece of cayenne. You want to taste it all around in your mouth. Now, we got to try this spicy kind here. Got a good sage flavor. A little bit of pepper. Just right. Delicious. This is what I'm taking home. Mm. Whole lot of it. See how many times I can say that before he gets mad. How much of this is mine? All of it. All right, so the next step is we're going to go ahead and start filling the uh, grinder here. And my stepmom, Carolyn, is going to start working. I guess that's Grandma Stony Ridge. Grandma Stony Ridge is going to start kneading and working that sausage. Let's get it done. What you're not seeing here is this grinder right here is working circles around that KitchenAid stand mixer. I'll see if I can find a link to where you can purchase one of these on Amazon if you're curious about getting one. This is a commercial grade nice grinder. We got it done guys. It looks good. The sausage is delicious. Everything's great. I want to thank you a whole lot for joining me here on the Stony Ridge Farm today. Please click that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. Click the little bell down there. It'll notify you when I post a new video. And be sure and share these videos. If you're watching my channel, if you think about it, share these videos. Share them on Facebook. Share them on Twitter. Share them on Google+. Share them wherever you can. It really helps the channel. 
We got to build this channel into something wonderful, something that we can enjoy with our families, and something we can use to teach people the old fashioned way and what a real farm does and the way things really work. Thanks a lot, guys. Come on back and see me. We'll see you next time. All right? Woo! <laughs> Ow! <laughs> Come on back and see me, guys. Land of the